Why would you do that? Why would you do that? We're in the end game now. By now, you would have seen a whole stack of RTX 5090 reviews and videos and somewhat understand how these cards perform. But how does something like the MSI GeForce RTX 5090 Supreme SoC perform? Well, it's faster than the Founders card. But by how much? Let's find out. Let's make this easy for you guys to understand. I'm gonna try not to get too technical because I can see that if I start going too technical, most of your eyes are gonna start glazing over and you're gonna skip the video. The MSI GeForce RTX 5090 Supreme SoC is built on the new NVIDIA Blackwell architecture and features 32 gigs of GDDR7 memory. The Supreme SoC has a BIOS switch feature on the card so you can switch between silent and gaming modes. Keep in mind that all MSI cards will ship in silent mode, so you'll need to toggle the switch for all of the performance to be unlocked. The size of the card is, to be honest, this thing is ridiculous. The card itself is 359 millimeters long, and this is a quad slot chunk. This thing is absolutely massive, and to be honest, it's uh, pretty heavy to hold <laughs> up this high. As far as the pricing is concerned for the Supreme SoC, this card will probably cost more than $2,000, but as for the actual price, I've got no idea. The card technically still isn't out by the time this video is going to go live. In terms of power delivery and consumption, the 5090 Supreme SoC requires a single 12 volt high power cable and will consume on average around about 600 watts at full tilt and it will idle around about 34 watts. As for the thermals, the MSI GeForce RTX 5090 Supreme SoC is pretty good in that department. The GPU maxed at around about 69 degrees Celsius and about 70 degrees at the memory junction over our one hour stress testing period. To test all of the new GPUs that you're about to see in this video, I use the same test bench that I used for all of our 50 series content with the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D. All right, let's jump into some testing. I'm not gonna bore you with me talking about all the results here. I'm gonna show you the numbers and you can pause the video at any time to look at any of these graphs. But let's start off with some Windows testing. All right, go ahead. Next up, we've got a whole bunch of Linux testing. As mentioned in our 5080 launch content, these drivers are a bit all over the place and they're not official drivers. I'm also aware that the kernel version is pretty old, but these drivers in their current state do not work on a newer kernel or any other distros. Otherwise, I would have used a newer kernel or a different distro. We just need to clear that up. 
Okay, let's take a look at those results. And yeah, there's gonna be some typos here, but not in the actual graphs themselves. I hope that makes sense. Next up are some metrics that I think you guys might find a little bit interesting. These are the averages of all of the tests in both Windows and Linux. Again, I'm not going to bore you with my voice here. I'm not going to bang on about this card too much. This is one of the top tier RTX 5090 cards available. And I think that MSI has done a good job with the design of this card. If anything, it's a little bit overkill in terms of the overall design, but that's kind of the point of the Supreme cards. They're supposed to be the top dog. They're supposed to be absolutely ridiculous. And this card is massive and absolutely ridiculous. Look at it. It's a four slot chunk. With this card in gaming mode, it does squeeze a little bit more performance out of the card by pumping the power draw up to 600 watts. In silent mode, it's the stock 575 that you'll find with the Founders card. My only concern with these cards is because it's a 600 watt card in gaming mode and the 12 volt high power cable is technically rated for 600 watts, that cable gets really, really hot. And I'm not sure I'm comfortable with the power cable for an over 2000 US dollar GPU getting that hot. It must still be within spec. <laughs> it does concern me a little bit. And I've said this many times in videos about GPUs over the years, and I'm gonna say it again, but at the end of the day, I'm just giving you a bunch of numbers from a bunch of tests that we ran. And ultimately all of this stuff in your pocket is yours. It's your money. I can't make you spend your money. However, by the sounds of what I'm hearing, well, at least when this video is coming out, you won't be able to buy these cards anyway. So yeah, who knows? Who knows what the truth is? These cards still aren't out yet. This has been a really weird launch period for GPUs, considering we've been able to put out basically any review we want over the last week and a bit, and you guys still can't buy these cards. It screams paper launch to me.